my faith. Yes. Yes. We'll forgive their sins. Hallelujah. Yes, and heal their land. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 God speaks to us. Hallelujah. God speaks to us. He speaks to us so clearly. And we ought to be able to hear when He speaks to us. Hallelujah. Not just hear, but we ought to obey. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rigby, for leading us to the throne room of grace one more time to prepare the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are in this moment. Join with us in worship. Would you call out to God even now? Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for the prayers that have gone up already in this house. I thank you, God, for speaking to us. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Help us to heed your word. Help us to heed your warning. God, help us, Father, to live a life of holiness and repentance before you. Hallelujah. God, we honor you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What we are doing here is just creating the atmosphere that God would inhabit the praises of his people. Hallelujah. For the next few moments, would you just create the atmosphere? Would you offer your praise, your personal praise unto the Lord even now? Hallelujah. God, I praise you. I honor you. And I worship you. I adore you. And I bless you, God. Hallelujah. For you are worthy, God. You are worthy of our praises. Hallelujah. 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 We lift our hearts. We lift our hearts in praise. Without. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been, been revived. When we shall leave this land. Can we sing it one more time? Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet right in this moment, God. call out to Him right Sweet now.
Hallelujah. Pleasant hello. Good morning or whatever time it is that you're watching us right now. We welcome you to the worship experience where we declare that you will have a life-changing experience as we worship God together. We declare John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Of course, we're coming to you from Word of Truth Ministries International, located in beautiful Nassau, the Bahamas. And if you're here locally, we are on Gladstone Road and Word of Truth Boulevard. We invite you, put aside everything else. Let's worship God together. Let's praise Him today in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. We have welcomed God's Holy Spirit even now into this place. And I want to read a few verses from the Word of God as our worship ministry comes to lead us further in worship. Declares in, in Isaiah, the 61st chapter, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort, that's why the word comes, to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified amen God's anointing is in this house. His presence and His power. And we have come, we have come to worship the Lord today. Amen. As our worship ministry comes right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. God is good. And He is worthy to be praised. As we come into His presence, Lord God. Father, we lift up holy hands unto you with our hands lifted up and with our mouths filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving. You've come to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. With my hand, with my hands lifted. Oh, and my mouth. Oh, with a heart. Oh, I will bless thee, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Come on, that's a sign of surrender. With my hands lifted, lifted up unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. With my mouth, praise to the God of all gods. Hallelujah. With a heart. Oh, do you have a grateful heart this morning? I will bless thee. Oh Lord, oh I will bless thee, oh Lord, I will bless thee, oh, oh I bless you, Lord, I bless you, Lord, I will bless thee, oh with a heart, oh I will bless thee, I will bless thee. Oh Lord, oh with my hands lifted up, with my hands lifted, and my mouth filled with praise. Oh with a heart, oh I will bless thee, I will bless thee. Oh Lord, I will bless thee, O oh Lord, I will bless thee, I will bless thee. I bless you, Lord, I bless you, Lord. 
Oh, at all times have a blessing, O oh Lord, with the heart of Oh, I will bless thee, I will bless thee, oh, I will bless thee, O oh Lord, I will bless thee, I will bless thee. I bless you, Lord, I bless you, Lord. Oh, with the heart of thanksgiving. Oh, I will bless thee, I will bless thee, oh, my name. Oh, bless his holy, his holy name. Now come on, testify, he has done great things. Yes, he has, he has done great, oh, for me. He has done great. Oh, he has done great things for me. He has. Oh, bless, bless his holy, holy name. He has done. He has done great things. Yes, he has. He has done great oh, for me. He has done oh, great things for me. Hallelujah. He has oh, blessed. holy his holy name hallelujah hallelujah now put your hands together and bless the name of the lord open up your mouth won't you give god a praise in this place for he is worthy i will bless the lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make a boast in the lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I encourage you this morning. I entreat you this morning. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me out of all my fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. He's an awesome God. And he is worthy to be praised and adored. Come on, let's create the atmosphere today. Hallelujah. Our God is a great God. He is a worthy God. He is a worthy God. Hallelujah. And Sister Rigby reminded us this morning, He is a holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and He is worthy to be praised and adored. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. We serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. He is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. If I had 10,000 tongues, I didn't have enough. That won't be enough to praise our God, to magnify our God. But with the one that I have, I am going to open up my mouth and give him praise. For he is worthy to be praised and adored. Hallelujah. He is an excellent God. He is a great God. He is a worthy God. He is an awesome God. He is a mighty God. He is healer. He is redeemer. He is way maker. Hallelujah. 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 Can I tell you, there's nobody in this world who, that, who we can boast of, of as having all, all those all those um, words, attributes to describe them. There's nobody. You can't find it in your children. You can't find it in your spouse. You can't find it in your, your best friend. You can't find it in your boss. You can't find it in your politician. Only in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the only one. So he deserves all, our, all the glory. He deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. We honor him today. Hallelujah. 
for he is worthy to be praised and adored hallelujah hallelujah i don't know about you but i just get excited when i come into the house of the lord hallelujah because i realize and i recognize just how good god is just how good god is and as much times as we stand up here and we praise that's not enough hallelujah hallelujah so whatever every opportunity we get let us give god our all let's give him our best amen 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 hear my cry oh lord hallelujah 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 come on put your hands together as we worship god and praise him in this place hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Oh, hear my cry. Oh, from the ends. Oh, when my heart. Oh, lead me, Lord. That is higher than. Oh, that is higher. Oh, hear my cry, hear my cry. From the ends of the earth. Oh, when my heart. Oh, lead me, Lord. That is higher than, oh, that is higher. Oh, for thou hast been, for thou a shelter and a strong tower. Oh, when my heart, oh, lead me, Lord. That is higher than, oh, that is higher. Oh, for thou hast been a shelter. And a strong tower. Oh, when my heart. Oh, lead me, Lord. That is higher than, oh, that is higher. Oh, and it's raining all around me. All around. I can't feel it. Oh, it's a lot of rain. Oh, right on, Jesus. Please send. Oh, until in the land, oh, it's raining all around me, and it's all around. Oh, I can feel it. It's a lot of rain. Oh, right on. Please send. Oh, until, until we are wet, until we are soaked in the ladder rain. Oh, we got the victory. We got, we got the victory. We got the victory. We got the victory. Oh, every knee, every knee shall. That Jesus, oh Jesus is Lord, every knee. That Jesus, oh yes, oh we got the victory. Hallelujah, we got the victory. We got the victory. 
we got the victory oh every knee every oh that jesus is lord every knee oh that jesus oh satan defeated satan defeated Satan defeated, Satan defeated, oh every knee, every knee, oh that Jesus, yes he is Lord, every knee, oh yes, Satan defeated, Satan defeated, Satan defeated, Satan defeated, oh and every knee, every knee, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus, oh give God the glory, Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give Him the glory. Oh, every knee, every knee. Jesus is Lord. Every knee. Oh, we got the victory. We got the victory. Satan defeated. Satan defeated. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give Him the glory. Oh, every knee, every knee. That Jesus Lord every knee every knee shall bow that Jesus is Lord he is Lord every knee Hallelujah. One day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want to give him all the glory in this place. For he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for he is Lord yes he is Lord he is Lord he has risen from the dead he has from the dead and he is Lord. Oh, and every knee shall bow. Every, every knee shall bow. And every tongue proclaim and confess that Jesus Christ. Oh, that Jesus Christ, he is Lord, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you all the glory and the We bless your holy name. We give you all the glory and the honor and the 
search all over Couldn't find nobody Lurch high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody's great Nobody, nobody Nobody's greater Hallelujah, I search all over. I search all over, couldn't find. Search high and low, still couldn't find. Nobody's great. Oh, nobody's great. Nobody. Nobody's greater. Oh, I search all over. I search all over. I search all over. Couldn't find. Search high and low. Still couldn't find. Nobody's great. Oh, nobody's great, nobody, nobody's greater. Oh, that's why we sing, how great is our God. Oh, how great, how great is our God. Oh, sing with me. Oh, how great is our God. Oh, and all will see. Oh, all will see how great. Oh, how great is our God. Oh, how great. How great is our God. How great. Oh, he's a great God. Is our. Oh, sing with me. Oh, how great is our God, and all will see. Oh, all will see how great, oh, how great is our God. Oh, he is name above all names, yes, he is name above. Oh, you are worthy, God. Oh, oh, and my heart will sing. Oh, how great, how great is our God, is our God. Oh, he's name above all names, name above all names. Oh, you are worthy, God. You are of all praise. And my heart will sing. Oh, how great. Oh, how great is our God. Oh, so I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. Oh, to give him glory, I lift my voice to sing your praise with every breath. Oh, that I am. Oh, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you. Oh, I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I live to give God glory. Oh, I lift my voice to sing your praise with every breath. Oh, that I am. Oh, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you. Oh, I live. I lift my hands to give you glory. I lift 
my voice Go oh, to sing your praise With every breath All oh, that I am Oh, I'm going to praise you I'm going to praise you Oh, how great is our God How great Oh, how great is our Oh, sing with me How great is our God And all will see Oh, all will see how great How great How great is our God Oh, hallelujah How great is our God How great Oh, how great is our God Oh, sing with me Oh, how great is our God And all will see Oh, how great How great How great is our God Is our Oh, hallelujah Yes, he is the way maker, Lord. May wake a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Oh, you are way maker, way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are way maker, way make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, and even when I can't see it, even when I can see it, He's working. Even when I can feel it, He's working. He never stops, He never stops working. He never stops, He never stops working. Even when I can see Him, He's working. Even when I can feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. Even when I can see him, he's working. Even when I can feel it, he's working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, oh, you never stop, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Oh, you never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Oh, even when I don't see it, even when I don't see him, he's working. Even when I can feel him, he's working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Oh, you are a way maker, way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise. Light in the 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. That's why we say how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God overseas. Oh, we we'll see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God, how great is our God. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He is a way maker. He is a great God. Oh, we we'll see how great, how great is our God, is our God. Oh, send the now, then sings my soul, then sings my, my Savior, my Savior God. Oh, how great thou art, how great. Oh, how great thou art, how great. Oh, then sinks my soul, my, oh, my Savior, my Savior God to thee. Oh, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, how great, how great thou art. Oh, Lord, my God, Lord my God, oh, when I in awesome, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands has made. Oh, and I see the stars, I see, and I hear the rolling thunder, I hear the rolling thunder, oh, and thy power throughout the universe. Oh, that's why my soul sings and sings, then sings my, oh, my Savior, my Savior God, too. Oh, how great thou art, how great thou art, oh, how great thou art, how great Oh, then sings my soul, then sings my, oh, my Savior, my Savior God to thee. Oh, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, how great thou art, how great. How great, how great, 
ministry hallelujah god is great 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 hallelujah how great you hallelujah I see even if I can't see I hear I hear my sisters in the house oh God amen God is great amen hallelujah God is great hallelujah how great thou art Across the sanctuary, put your hands together and give God a praise in the house today. Hallelujah, for he is worthy of our praises. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much, ladies. Hallelujah. 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 God is not just good, God is great. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship ministry. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. David said, in case we don't know, in case we don't know, he says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He said, not just God's worthy. He says, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. It, it means, it means you better put some praise just on his name alone. Amen. His name is worth something. And so if his name is worth something, imagine the person. Hallelujah. Imagine the person. Imagine the person. Imagine the person. Amen. We welcome you once again for those of you that is just joining us. We're in worship here at the Sanctuary Word of Truth Ministries International. And we come with one aim and one desire in mind. That is to worship the true and the living God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the one that breathed into us the breath of life. And we became a living soul. Amen. And so we encourage you. We encourage you right where you are. Worship with us. If you got to shout in your room or wherever you are, then shout. If you got to run, then you better run. Whatever you've got to do. Uh, we've come to worship him. Amen. Because he is worthy. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So we welcome you. We thank God for all of you. And we praise God. Even for those of us who are, those of you that are, uh, in the house, not in the house, but are a part of this house, and you can't be here today, but you're tuning in, uh, we bless God for you. We trust that as we sense God's spirit here, that right there in your space, that you are creating the atmosphere. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, we read earlier, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me. Amen? To preach glad tidings. Hallelujah. To tell you about the good news, the gospel of of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the good news. The good news is that Jesus loves you. Amen. The good news is that Jesus died for you. Amen. The good news is that Jesus wants to save you. The good news is that Jesus wants to prosper you. The good news is that Jesus is coming back again for you and I and we're going to live with him throughout eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. So we bless God for this season, this moment, that we can praise you. Praise him. Amen. Amen. I want to take this time to go into a time of prayer, pastoral prayer. There are many amongst us that are not feeling well. There are many amongst us that uh, are just weary in spirit. There are many amongst us that are sick physically, spiritually, there are many amongst us that, that, that wants to be made whole, but the worries and the cares of life, they're being deceived by the enemy. But I declare God's word today into the atmosphere, be thou made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen? And so I want to pray. I want to pray. Amen. There are, there are a number of our, uh, I got some calls from a number of, of those who belong here and we're believing God for complete healing. Amen. I want to read a scripture text because I want to stay Bible. I want to stay biblical, theologically sound. I'm reading a book uh, 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 recently. In fact, I'm in it. Uh, called, uh, it's called um, How to Pastor in This New Century um, by the seminarian from Den Denver Seminary. Lord, I forgot his name, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mead. That's his name, Dr. Mead. And he says, uh, uh, we've got to come back to being theologically sound. What's theologically sound? We've got to come back to his word. The Bible says, God says, I sent my word and my word healed them. When we declare God's word, the, Jesus said it like this, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And whatever is dead in your life, when we declare God's word, there ought to be a quickening. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you can believe all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. 
In the book of James, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read a few verses, 12 through 16. In the book of James, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 16. James writes, But above all things, my brethren, swear not. That's cussing and everything else. Don't swear. Neither by heaven, nor neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Look at what the word continues to say. Is any among you afflicted, troubled in your spirit, in your mind? It says what? Let him pray. Then it says, is any merry? Are you happy today? Let him sing songs. Verse 14 says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray. Uh-huh. That's what it says over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. What type of faith? Faith in God. That he has the capacity and the ability to heal whatever is our situation. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Then verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want to let you know that without prayer, we're nothing. We need to pray. That's the power of God, prayer. We may have fancy churches, lights, but that's not going to cut it, y'all. That's just a, 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 a side effect to help us be excellent in worship but the main thing is to worship and even if we don't have the lights and even if we don't have the media and even if we don't have the crowd oh that man would praise the Lord according to his excellent goodness towards the children of men. That's what David declared in Psalm 103. And so I want to call the body of Christ. I want to call us back to the word like never before. I want to call us back to a faith that is so secure in God that whatever we believe God for, it's possible that it's going to happen. I want to call us back to the word so that we don't have to have doubt and fears and anxiety in our lives, but that we can live whole. The Bible says this, put on the joy, the garment of praise. I want to call us back to the place that we can look beyond our physical selves and we can praise God no matter how, no matter how. No matter what's going on, we can still praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, see, the key word there is bless and all. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So we go before, we come before the throne room of God in prayer. I call Wayne its name today lying on the hospital bed. Hallelujah. 
I call as a place of contact. I'm just putting this on my head as a point of contact. I call Sister Anne's name in a state of recovery even now. Father, I declare that we will not live in fear. Neither will we be driven by what the world says. But that we will believe you because your word says to us, is there anything too hard for God? So Father, now as we call on your name, I pray that you would move amongst us. Move in our lives, God. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, God, I curse every evil thing back to the pit of hell right now. And God, I release your ministering angels to minister to our every need. I release your ministering angels. I release your Holy Spirit. Oh God. In other words, we invite you God to have your divine way. Cancer, you've got to go. Blood pressure, you've got to go. In the name of Jesus. COVID-19 symptoms, you've got to go. In the name of Jesus. Be thou made whole. Every sickness, and every disease. And God, if you can go at the pool, if you can go at the pool of Bethesda amongst the sickness, and you are the healer, and sickness does not come to you. So God, right now, as we are amongst those who may be sick amongst us, I declare your wholeness. I declare your wholeness and your healing in accordance with your word that you were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we are here. So God, we take authority right now in the name of Jesus over the vices of the enemy. Oh God, I feel your anointing. Woo! And we declare that we are free in every area of our lives. And we thank you for the manifestation of your power amongst us in Jesus name amen see see you and I have got to understand we can't allow Satan to trick us with doubt and unbelief and anxiety and fear I was telling God this week I said God I still believe you that's the attitude you've got to have I still believe you the Bible says all things are possible. Not maybe, not, 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 there, there, there's no doubt about it. All things are possible to them that believe. God, I believe you this morning. I believe you for healing in my brother, my sister. I believe you for wholeness. I believe you for deliverance. I believe you for peace. I believe you for joy. I believe you for provision. I believe you today. And I confess you as God. Oh, I just felt that in my spirit. Mm. God says to tell you. God says to tell you. God says to tell you. What happened is we have been bamboozled into listening to the voices of the world and in listening to the doubters and in listening to those who, who, who have a form of God. They don't know the truth. 
I read, a, I, I read something in the daily a couple years ago, uh, a couple days ago. An economist in this Bahamas right here says that, in fact, I just saw it again, I think last night in my studies. An economist in this Bahamas says, we better prepare for an economic hurricane. The devil is a liar. The word of God says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And the Bible says, and we shall eat the fruit thereof in accordance to what we speak. So I speak life over this nation. I speak life over this ministry and every ministry that's declaring the gospel of truth. I speak life today. For you shall live. And not die. Don't you listen to what the economists say. And what the doctors say. They ain't God. Yes God gives them wisdom. But God. How's the final say? I'm, I'm just mad at the devil. I'm on a war path this morning. Hallelujah. Don't you listen. If the word is not of God. Then shut your ear to it no matter how intellectual or how they may seem to be intelligent there is only one true God his name is Jehovah church 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 we, we gotta wake up from this slumber wake up some we, 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 we must understand we must understand that our God that we have been confessing is the true and the living God. I don't care what the world says. I still believe God. Our theme for this year as a ministry is reaping a bountiful harvest. Genesis chapter 26. We're in July and the enemy will try to come and say, well, y'all declared that y'all ain't reaping nothing. Well, let me tell the devil what the word says. The Bible says this, Genesis 26, he's so dumb, he don't understand. The Bible says this, and there was famine in the land. Uh -huh, that, that's what it says in Genesis 26. And there was a famine in the land. And the Bible says, and in the midst of the famine, God told Isaac to sow in that land. In what land? In the land that had famine. Then here's the revelation just now, y'all. Even in famine, Isaac had something to sow. I'm not preaching, y'all. I'm not in my word text, but this is where God leads. Isaac had something to sow. And the Bible says this, and Isaac sowed in that land. And here is the revelation. And he reaped a hundredfold. Here, here it is. In that same year. I declare over this ministry, I declare over your life that you shall reap in this same year. That's why I serve him. A conversation with God, Elder Kev, I was saying, God, you, you know, he, I said, God, you, you, you got to be God. This stuff, you block all the stuff that's in my mind. What, what am I doing listening to what man says? Man can only go so far. But God is eternal. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna go into word, y'all. Man can only man can only go so far. The Bible says, "Put not your trust in horses, and chariots, but put your trust in." God is talking to somebody right now that's putting your trust in man. The word says, "The arm of flesh will fail you, but God will never." never fail you. Amen? We're just exhorting you with word. That's what it is. I got word upon word. But we're just exhorting you because this is what worship is all about. We, we, God says awake from sleep. I hear your Holy Ghost. The prophetic word for us today is awake from sleep and slumber in Zion. Awake. Get up. 
It's time to get up. It's time to reconnect. It's time to refocus. It's time to be revitalized. It's time to kill that fear. Second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. I declare today that if you would agree with me, I will not live in fear, neither will you. But I will live in the truth and the power of God because the Holy Spirit resides within me. Amen. Wake up, church. Wake up, the universal church. Don't, don't, we, we, we have been bamboozled. We have been beguiled, it seems. Spirit of fear is permeate, permeating our world. And, and, and we, we, we pull down strongholds. We pull down strongholds. Go to where you're taking me. I don't know where God's going to get me today. We, we pull down strongholds. We, in the name of Jesus, we pull down vain imagination. Every high thing that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We pull down strongholds by the power of the almighty God. We pull it down in faith. Ah. Uh, and we declare that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. For this is the heritage of those who seek God's face. And the righteousness. Uh, I'm just here to challenge your spirit. I hear God says, just challenge their spirit. Pull down every stronghold. How do you pull it down? Through the word and through prayer. You declare God's word. I pull it down. I pull down the stronghold of poverty. I pull down the stronghold of lack. I pull down the stronghold of insufficiency. I pull down the stronghold of doubt. I pull down the stronghold of fear. I pull down the strongholds of the enemy. Anything. 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 And I declare by the authority of the word of God that this moment begins a brand new moment in your life. Hallelujah. I pull down the, by the authority of the word of God. I declare it again that you shall live. I declare it with every fiber of my being that you shall live. I, I declare it that you shall live and not die to declare the work of the Lord. My God, my God, I feel your presence. Hallelujah. I will live. I will live. And when it's time for God to take me home, I will really live. Because I'm going to live for eternity. Amen. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. That's what you've got to declare over your life. I shall live and not die. I don't care how the situation looks. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what man says. I declare God's word. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. This ain't no play play thing, y'all. This is the power of the Almighty God. Whew. Shabosa. What, what am I doing worrying about the devil? What am I doing worrying about whether things going to work or not? I shall live. I hear that so strongly in my spirit. I shall live. I shall live. Not possibly, not maybe, Elder Keva, Sister Mavis, I shall live. I shall live and not die. Here's the glorification of God to declare the works of the Lord. You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why we're going to overcome? Because we're going to say things like, I was once poor, but now I'm rich. We're going to say things like, I was once sick, 
but now I'm well. We're going to say things like, I was once blind, but now I see. We're going to say things like, I was once, I was once not made whole, but now I'm whole. That's the clearing. Oh God, where you're taking me here. Ooh. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Shetorobo sata. Rebokota ramande. Shamande kosia rabasaka. Hallelujah. I shall live. And you shall live and not die. Mm. God of mercy. Oh God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Okay, God, I hear you. Let me, let me give you some of what God gave me. Let, let me give you some of what God gave me. Hallelujah. God, I must. Oh, glory. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, we give you the highest note of praise. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, glory to God. I declare you shall walk in boldness. You I declare, I declare God's word that he will make your enemies your footstool. I declare that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. I declare that you are victorious already. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. Shabo. Rebo Sata. Oh God, I bless you. God, I bless you. Glory! Hallelujah. Uh, let, let, me, let, let me give you a little bit of word, but before I do that, somebody just shout a glory in the house. Somebody just shout a glory in the house. Somebody just shout a glory wherever you are. Somebody shout a glory to God. Oh, God. Oh God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, hallelujah, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, y'all, y'all, y'all sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down, let me give you a little bit of word what God gave me, you shall live, you shall live, you shall live and not die. You're going to live in your mind. You're going to live in your family. You're going to live in your finances. You're going to live on your job. You're going to live in your community. You're going to live in our Bahamas. You're going to live in this world. You are going to live. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Glory. In this anointing, there is wholeness. In this anointing, in this power of the Almighty God, there is deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me encourage your spirit a little bit more, then we're going to get out of here. Let me go into Word. Put up there on the screen, would you please, Second uh, Kings, uh, Second Kings chapter 13. Would you put it up there? Hallelujah. Okay, my screen's not on up there. I'm going to look in the back here then. Okay, I'm going to read it from, I'm going to read it from, uh, hallelujah. Second Kings. Father, now, thank you as you're in this house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody just got delivered right there. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody just got a breakthrough right there. I just heard it in my spirit. Somebody just got a breakthrough, a release right there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, now your word is light and life. 
Your word, God, is truth. Your word is you. And so God, even now, as I share a portion of that which you have given to me, God, as we're in this atmosphere, as you, as we submit to you, God, help us always to be guided by you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 13, the 14th through the 19th verse, hallelujah. Would you stand with us, please, as we do, to honor God? To honor God, I believe that. Hallelujah. In fact, let's read this together, the 14th through the 19th verse. I'm going to use this as my prop right here. Yes, sir. The 14th through the 19th verse. Let's read together, please. Everybody's got it? 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. Now, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We declare that your word will not return unto your void, but it will accomplish that which you have purposed. And it will prosper in the thing whereby you sent it. God, I need you now. I need you more than I've ever needed you before. So God, I pray your divine touch, your divine impartation, revelation, anointing afresh. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the book of 2 Kings, the 13th chapter, verse 14 through 19. Let's read together, please. Now, Elisha was fallen sick. Of his sickness. This is a prophet of God. Whereof he died. Now that's just a prelude. A summary first of what's going to happen afterwards. Okay. In other words he didn't just die. And then was speaking again. They were just telling you the summary of what was happening before he died. Here's the summary. Uh -huh. And Joash. The king of Israel. Came down unto him. And wept over his face. And said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Obviously, uh, Elisha must have recited these words to Israel because those were the exact words he said when Elijah, his mentor, was taken up into heaven. Amen? So Joash the king was able to declare it also. Let's go further. Verse 15. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. Uh huh. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hand upon the king's hands and he said open the window eastward god likes the east that's the way he's coming from uh-huh and he opened it then elisha said shoot and he shot and he said the arrow of the lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from syria for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. 18 and 19. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite the ground. And he smote thrice. And stay. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. God's word is blessed. You may. Be seated. This scripture wouldn't leave me after I was talking with my wife about it for a while. 
And I was going in another direction. And as I stayed up late last evening, early morning, every time I tried to go another direction, God brought me back to this. And here is the word, here yeah, God, in this hour in particular. Not keep tapping. Keep striking. Why? Deliverance will come. No, no, I'm just tapping. Keep striking for deliverance will come. Can I tell you, when you read the text, God had already prophesied through the prophet Elisha in the 17th verse that deliverance had already come. Check it out. He says, you're going to smite all of the Syrians and you're going to consume them and there will be none left. And then he said, Elijah to the king, he says, now smite the arrow on the ground. Here is the reason why full deliverance hadn't come because he smote three times and he stopped. Elisha never told him to stop. The reason why that we don't get deliverance it's because we get weary in well doing and God is saying to us we've got to keep smiting the ground because deliverance has already been prophesied over our lives. And so I want to remind you this Christian journey is a journey about consistency and perseverance. You've got to be consistent in your walk, you and I, and we have got to keep at it no matter how difficult life is because if God is for us, the question that was asked, who can be against us? So even though we have the victory through God, we must walk this thing out. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We've got to walk it out. How do we walk it out? I'm going to show you. Because as we continue to walk it out, every step of the way, God will bring moments of deliverance and moments of deliverance until we see him face to face. What is deliverance? Deliverance means that you are in some battles, but at the end of the day, you and I are winners because God is on our side. Amen? And so in the text, the prophet Elisha said to the king, he says, strike your arrows on the ground. We cannot give up, y'all, when confronted with challenges and difficulties. I, I, I'm trying to figure out where did the real church go in this season? I'm trying to figure out God. Uh, I, I know I'm not Elisha, and it's not just me who has not bowed uh, uh, their knee, my knees to Baal. God said, I've preserved 7,000, Elijah. I've preserved 7,000. So God just answered the question. He says, God, uh, he says, Lester, not just you. There are many who have not bowed their knees to Baal. And then I heard this prophetic word. He says, I'm going to cause the church to rise up and so in such a way that the world will know know that I am God because deliverance comes only through the people of God. You got to understand we will have mountain experiences but we will have valley experiences. We will have deserts and dry places but we can't stop striking because deliverance, I want you to get it, because deliverance is going or will come. We must always hold on to our faith in God that he is with us. 
I like what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 43 and 2. When thou passest through the waters, uh -huh, uh -huh, I will be with thee. You see the deliverance, y'all? See, you're concentrating on the water and God said, I'm with you. You don't understand. You are so concentrating on the water. God says, can't you see you're passing through? And you don't understand that while you're passing through, it is God that's carrying you and I. And we've got to keep our focus on God and not on the waters when thou passest through the waters I will be with thee Isaiah 43 and 2 he says and through the rivers they shall not overflow you it may get up to your neck sometimes but it will not overflow you because God's going to always give you the ability that you can see clearly and the rain is going to go and the river is going to subside and God is going to bring you through to dry ground because you've been persistent in your walk with him and then he says and when I like this one thou walkest through the fire. Oh God. He says thou shall not be burned. And then he says neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You understand what God is saying. All hell is breaking loose in your life and you're going to be walking through it and you're going to be declaring I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I've been delivered y'all. So let's go to the text. Let's go deeper. In a world that is constantly turning, we must come back to the foundation. What's the foundation? Hearing God's voice and obeying as he speaks. We, we've got to come back to hearing God's voice. I, I'm just a bit up to hear the hype. Of people that are just talking stuff that's not word based. When I need the power of God, I don't need your fancy programs and your slick schedules. What I need is the word of God to come deep down into my spirit. I, I don't need to make you happy with through the three points and tell you that everything is going to be all right. What I need to tell you is that the word says, yes, everything is going to be all right. But you've got to do something. You've got to live a life that's pleasing to God. So, here's the text. God is the only constant in a world that's changing. Hear me today, those of you that are listening to my voice. God, Jehovah, is the only constant in a world that's changing. And here's what we've got to come back to. We've got to come back to hearing the true prophetic voices of God. We've got to, because when you hear the true prophetic voice of God, it will speak, thus saith the Lord. I'm in the text. And so even though the king jo uh, Jehoash was wicked, the Bible says he was wicked, but he was a king of Israel, God's people. And here was the key. In all of his wickedness, he knew how to find the prophet of God. Bahamas world, in all of your wickedness, you better be sure that you're able to find a prophet of God. Because it is the true prophet of God that will speak thus saith the Lord. Found the prophet of God. I'm talking about keep striking. Deliverance will come. And then the prophet told the king what to do. He says, strike the ground. He didn't tell him when to stop. He says, strike the ground. 
We got to understand in our belief and frustration, Elder Keva, we must be careful that we do not stop striking on the ground before God brings deliverance. You are this close to being delivered and you allow the devil to cause you to give up right at the moment when deliverance is going to come. But whatever I've got to do, I've got to keep striking the ground. I may be wounded. I may be weary. I may be crying. I may be moaning. But I'm going to keep striking the ground until God brings the deliverance that he has promised to me. Oh, God. I'm trying, I'm trying to behave myself. Oh, God, I hear you, God. And we got to keep striking. How? How do we keep striking? There are many amongst you that are sick, God says. And we don't believe God. We don't believe that God can keep healing. He said, Lester, tell them keep striking until their healing comes. You, you've been healing, for you've been sick for too long. For the man at the pool of Bethesda, it was 38 years, long years. For the woman with the issue of blood, it was 12 long years. But I like a perseverance that one day when Jesus was passing by she said if I could only touch the hem of his garment she kept striking her all her money was gone she went to many doctors but she kept striking and the Bible says as she pushed through the crowd as she pushed through the naysayers as she touched the hem of his garment she was made whole Woo! You got to keep striking. Because if God has healed before, he'll do it again. You heard me say earlier, oh God, I feel your presence. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. I'm going to get out of your way but I just feel this anointing. Somebody needs to know right now. I declare I declare. Let me put my hand on your faith that you are healed by the word of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You got to keep striking. Keep striking until we see healing come. We got to keep striking because deliverance will come. We got to keep striking. Why? We got to keep striking for the salvation of our families. I know there's a knucklehead son. I know there's a daughter that's playing crazy. But you down on your knees in prayer. You got to keep striking. God, I'm crying out to you. I declare like Joshua as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. So I'm striking God. I know they're drinking that rum. I know they're smoking that dope. I know they're playing the fool. God but I'm going to keep striking because I believe you I believe your word that deliverance is going to come I don't want to go to heaven just me and Vanessa I want my whole family and as many as I can reach while I have breath in my body so when I go down in prayer, good God, when I strike in prayer, I got to call some names. I say, God, I call my name of my son. I call the name of my daughter. I call the name of every nephew. I call the name of every niece. I call the name of every cousin. I call the names that I can remember because I'm not going to stop striking until God brings deliverance in their life because salvation has got to come to my house and it's got to come today see this ain't no time this ain't no time to just be tapping in prayer this ain't no time elder keva to just be tapping god didn't tell him to tap god said strike you, you got to understand there's a difference between tapping and the, there's a difference. See, when you tap, you're preserving some energy for yourself because you're thinking you can do it by yourself. But when you strike, you strike with every fiber that's in your being. When you go down in prayer, you declare, God, I'm striking because I need you to deliver. And if you don't deliver, I don't know what I'm going to do. Keep striking. Deliverance. Not possibly. 
will come. Maybe some of y'all ain't got it yet. Let me go back to verse 17 then to remind you again. In verse 17 it says there, and he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said what? The arrow. Look at this here. There's two deliverances that came. He says, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Uh -huh. And then he says, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. Do you see it there? He says, not only the Lord delivered Delivered your mind into thinking that you're going to make it. He said deliverance of the Lord and deliverance from Syria. That means God's going to deliver you. That you're going to think that that which is impossible is now possible. Because you're holding on to the hand of God. He says there, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. He says here, not possibly. For thou shalt smite. He didn't say you're going to tap up. See, see, what, what happens is this. We've been just tapping up the enemy. And the enemy says, that's just a tap. I, I'm a, I like boxing. I used to like boxing. I still do. Muhammad Ali, probably the greatest boxer of all time, was a fancy boxer. See, and he would tap up. That's why he took so much punishment from men like Joe Frazier and Ken Norton and, and even George Foreman a little bit and other people. Uh, he, he, he would tap them up trying to be fancy. But when Mike Tyson came in, Mike Tyson wasn't about no tapping. Mike was into striking you out. If I can make a million dollars in one second instead of one minute, I'm going to take the one second. You got to understand, some of you have been tapping up the devil. But it's time for you to start striking the devil by the authority of the word of God. Because you've got to take him out. Because if you and I don't take him out, he's going to come back stronger. Okay, let me go Bible. When a devil leaves a house... Be careful that you clean the house and you put something in. Because when he comes back, he's coming back with seven other worse than himself. And so we got to keep striking. Keep striking for our healing. Keep striking for our families. Here's what I want to declare. Again, I'm going to give you one or two more. Get out of here. Keep striking for righteousness and justice. To reign in our land and in our world. God knows we need righteousness. God knows we need right living. We, we just need people to be right. And even if the world ain't right, then let it start with the church. Amen. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Do you see it there? It's really not about the world. It's about the church. Because if we, the people of God, will strike in prayer, will strike in righteousness, will strike in holiness, then God will heal our land. So we need to strike. Strike. Not tap. We need to strike. For deliverance will come. And we need to strike. We need to keep striking, striking until the people of God return to God and experience the miraculous power again. I said, if God can cause an ass to talk to Balaam, if God can cause an iron head, steel, axe head, the Bible says specifically to swim toward the stick that the prophet of God extended. If God can cause Elijah the prophet uh, to lay upon a boy and breathe into him uh, and the boy comes back to life again. Uh, if God can tell uh, a, a leper, he says, be thou made whole. Uh, if Jesus said to us, if thou canst believe, uh, all things are possible uh, to them that believe, uh, then I'm going to keep striking uh, until unbelief is vanished out of my life. Uh, 
I'm going to keep striking until I experience the miraculous power of God. Because I don't know about you. I need a miracle. And I need it today, God. So I'm asking you in faith, believing. I'm going to keep striking, God. Because you said in your word that you shall supply all my need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. got to keep striking because with every strike your faith is increased with every strike you recognize that you're drawing closer to God with every strike you realize that the enemy of doubt and fear and anxiety is defeated. With every strike, you draw yourself closer to God and you hear the breath, you hear his voice and you feel the breath of his air blowing on you. With every strike, we got to understand, Elijah said, King Jehoash, Jehoash, you make me mad. Because I want deliverance for you. But you don't want deliverance for yourself. He, he was saying, you don't know how much power God has. He's already stated that he's going to bring you his deliverance and deliverance from Syria. And you here striking three times. We've got to strike. Until God comes through with deliverance. Oh, let me close. Oh, let me We got to keep striking until we have no more strength anymore to do so. And God declares, in your weakness, you're made strong. I got to keep striking. Last night, y'all, about one o'clock in the morning, my body was feeling a bit weary. I had just preached a funeral for my uncle, in fact, just a few hours before. And I said, God, let me get about five o'clock. Let me go and study some more. He says, no, you got to study now. And I said, God, but my eyes are kind of tired. He said, no, you've got to study now. You know why? Because God has some now revelation for you that you can't wait for tomorrow to get it. God wants a now revelation for you that breakthrough will come in your life. Can I tell you that I stayed up and this is the result of the anointing of God when you strike in your weakness you've got to understand that God will be strengthened in your life be not weary in well doing Galatians 6 and 9 for you shall reap in due season if you faint not and finally oh God let me let me close with you oh, hallelujah Hallelujah, we've got to keep striking. We've got to keep striking. Here's the key, y'all. Verse 17. For our deliverance has already been promised. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Keep striking. Why? Because God is working on our behalf. I've got to leave you now, but I've got to remind you. This ain't no time to be given up. You can't be bamboozled by the enemy. You can't listen to what the world is saying. The world saying there's going to be an economic tsunami. But the devil is a liar. In the midst of a tsunami of what the world says, God can bring a bountiful supply in the midst of the fire. In fact, that's how God works the best. When you are in the midst of the famine, God is able to bring deliverance to your life. I want to encourage you today. Keep on striking. It doesn't matter what the people say. Keep on striking. It doesn't matter if they talk about you. Keep on striking because as you strike, the Holy Ghost that's inside of you, good God, is going to rise up within you and the Bible 
Bible says at the end of the day that greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. I've got to keep striking. Okay, let me come to me. Let me make it practical. I've got to keep striking because the vision of the Kiva has got to come to pass. Though the vision tarry, you better wait for it. But it shall come to pass. Okay, let me get personal. I gotta keep striking because I'm tired of being a slave to the lender. The borrower is a slave to the lender. God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I've got to get out of this debt that I'm in because you promised in your word that we are free. I've got to keep striking even though nobody may strike with me. I've got to keep striking because I'm going to see you face to face one of these days and I'm going to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh God, I'm going to strike in prayer. Oh God, I'm going to strike in praise. Oh God, I'm going to strike in worship. Oh God, I'm going to strike in my giving. I've got to keep striking. can't wait I can't do it just three times the Bible says Elijah says you should have struck at least about five times I'm closing you all and I went back and reminded myself the Holy Ghost says, don't you know I'm a God of grace? Five is the number of man. Uh, it's the number of grace and six is the number of man. If you had struck about five or six times, uh, I would have brought grace to humanity. You've got to understand when we keep striking, uh, the God of all grace uh, will come down uh, and he will do in us uh, what needs to be done. Uh, for we already have the victory. Church, I declare, it's a new day. We can't be complacent. We can't be at ease in Zion. That's why I appreciate those of you that take the time to come into the house of God. Some days you don't feel well, but you're here. Because you realize, I got a strike to push through. <laughs> Dr. Mead in his book, talking about pastoring in the new century, he says this, there's four things that a pastor must have if he's going to be successful. One, he's got to have personal integrity. And then he says, this may seem crazy. He says, but a pastor also got to have common sense. Common sense. But here's the one I want to leave you with. He says, a pastor must always have passion for God and ministry. If you as a child of God, don't have passion for God, you will discover that you were striking hard. But because the enemy has gotten in, you find yourself tapping. And before long, you find yourself not even doing anything at all. Jesus says, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Not lukewarm. He says, because if you are, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. In the natural, y'all, I, I, I see some people do it. I can't do it. 
I can't drink cold tea. I can't even drink lukewarm tea. I like my tea hot, hot. And I've learned, thank God for my mama Cohen, I've learned to drink hot, hot tea, Elder Kevin, without slurping. Because she would say to me, if you don't stop slurping this tea, I'm going to knock you upside your head. So I like it hot. And when it's hot, I don't even sip it. I can drink hot tea and you won't even know I'm there because I've been taught. I, I can deal with lukewarm tea. I, I can deal with cold tea. In fact, uh, nowadays, I don't even put a whole, but in fact, hardly at all because I, I don't drink Lipton tea. I drink the herbal tea. I don't put cream in my tea because cream waters it down, makes it cool. I like the real stuff. Stuff. God says, I'd rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm, because I'm a spew out of my mouth. God, I pray that we won't just be tappers. Help us to strike Father, Son. Holy Ghost, four, grace, six, the number of man. Help us to strike God until the deliverance that you have promised already will come to our lives. Do I have any strikers in the house today? Would you open your mouth and give God a Shabbat praise? Would you shout aloud unto him? Hallelujah! Glory. Glory. Now, Lord, email from heaven. I just heard God say in my spirit, said, this church, this ministry, this ministry will be a ministry of wholeness. This ministry. This ministry will be a ministry of wholeness. Those that are bound will be made free. Those that are sick will be healed. Those that are in bondage will be made free. Those, whatever I receive it, God, I declare it. This ministry, I don't know about any other ministry, y'all. Thank God for them. But I'm hearing from this ministry. God says, this ministry. Word of Truth Ministries International, Nassau, Bahamas, Incorporated March 2007. This ministry will be a place of wholeness in every area of your life. I declare that the word of God will not be stolen from your hearts. I declare that it, will, it has fallen into good ground and it will bring forth abundant fruit. Don't stop striking. Deliverance will come. Give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the greatest aspect the greatest aspect of the word of God is for souls to come into the kingdom of God that's God's greatest desire and you're here today in this house or you're watching by means of television you don't have Jesus in your life. I want to give you this invitation from God to receive him. Those of you that are in the house while our heads are bowed today, if there's one in this house and you say, God, I need you. I need you, God, because I recognize but I can't make it without you. You need salvation. You don't know God as your Lord and Savior today. 
you are away from God. Sin causes us to be separated from God. You say, God, I need you to be my Savior. As an outward sign, as an outward sign, those of you that are in the house, in fact, wherever you're watching, you too can do it because God sees you where you are. If you say, preacher, pray for me that I would receive God's salvation as I pray for myself. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray today. I want to pray that God will cause you to pray even for yourself. That salvation will come to your life. The Bible says it like this. This day has salvation come to Israel. You don't have to get yourself together. It's not by works. It's by the grace of God. If you know that you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're a backslider, if you've never known God before, this God that I'm talking about is the true and the living God, the creator of all. And he says to get to him, you've got to come through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus says it like this to John. In John, he declared to the people, he says, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man comes unto the Father but by me. I want to pray for you wherever you are today. In the house. Hallelujah. In the house and outside the house. But you've got to pray also with me for yourself. You've got to open your mouth. And you've got to confess for yourself. Let's pray even now. The greatest strike that you can make is a strike to give aside the world and to come to know God. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for giving me the insight, the anointing, the revelation to declare your word this morning. It's not of me, God. It's all because of you. And Father, you said in your word that if we confess our sins, that you, God, are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God, that individual right now that's confessing, as I agree with them in prayer, that individual that's asking you to come into their heart, that's believing you, to be their God that's receiving you even now. God, I thank you. I thank you for accepting them into the family of God. Father, I thank you, God, that as your Holy Spirit helps them to walk in accordance and live in accordance with your word, that you will strengthen them and guide them into all truth. Thank you, God, that you are still the true and the living God and that your word is truth. We bless you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise in the house. For that soul that's come into the kingdom of God even now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to thank God again for another opportunity that we've had to share by means of media today. Thank you, all of you that have tuned in. I know sometimes we don't get to all of you, but to reply, but we do, let me say this, we do hear your, your, your words of, that you sent to us, and we thank God for you for tuning in. But for those of you that are in the Bahamas, in Nassau, Again, I want to give you a special invitation on behalf of my wife and myself, Elder Vanessa, and the exciting people of Word of Truth. I want to encourage you to come to the sanctuary. I had a few people here yesterday They said, Bishop, I didn't even know this was in the back here. I said, yeah, this is where we are. I want to encourage you. Come and be with us. 9.45, every Sunday morning we start in prayer. We are in worship. 
And then, of course, Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're here in our Tuesday Bible study. We're here. So I want to encourage you. In fact, you can go to our webpage, go to our Facebook page, go to our social media platforms. The information is there on the screen. You can go there and you can find out more about us. We look forward. I'm inviting you especially. We look forward to having you in the house so that we can celebrate together. And then I believe this. I said the other day that God has placed upon my life as he has instructed me. God has placed upon my life even more so. I was running from it, but a financial anointing. And that anointing is to declare financial soundness and wholeness to the body of Christ. God has, God has placed upon my life. And, and a part of that is this, that we must learn to invest in the economy of God. How do we do that? We do that through our tithes and our offerings and our gifts. In fact, I, uh, Spirit was impressing upon me. Uh, uh, I've been, I, I preached a sermon many years ago uh, uh, called Your Five T's to Success. Your time, your talents, your temple, your tithe. Time, talents, temple, tithe. What was the fifth one? And your treasures, eh? Time, talents, your temple, your tithe. No, it wasn't treasure. I'm going to remind myself. But five T's to success. I'm going to re-preach that, but in a different format. I want to encourage you. A part, of, a part of the ministry of God is to be a sound investor. This investment in God, you will always get positive returns. Our tithe and our offering. So I want to encourage you. The information is there also on the screen. Give an offering. Give a tithe into this ministry. Let's help in building the work of God. Yesterday we, I ain't going to talk about it too much, but yesterday we took about 12, no, about 14, was that yesterday or Friday? Friday. About 14 bundles of clothing, y'all, to some churches and to some NGOs. And uh, they were so blessed so pleased that we were able to share. In fact, one of the ladies said, uh, uh, thank you for the clothing. She says, uh, Pastor, y'all have any food to give away? In fact, a couple of them, I told her, we don't have no food right now, but we'll get some. I want to encourage you as we do ministry, as we serve, because that's what ministry is, serving God. I want to encourage you, be a participator. Give a tithe, give an offering. If you're here locally, go ahead and do that. Go to our, our information on the screen. You can give locally, direct deposit, etc. You can come to the church. You can call in. You can email us. We'll be here. Or you can give internationally. The information is there on the screen. So, until next time, may the grace and the peace and the favor of the Almighty God rest and abide upon you even now and forevermore. I want to leave you with a little blessing that I got from my good friend, Bishop Vernon Lamb, there in Bermuda. Every now and then we, we touch base. And the, the blessing basically says, may God's feathers hover over you. May God's blood of protection ever be upon the mantle, the doorpost of your heart. And may God's fence surround your life. Keep you protected. This is Bishop Lester M. Cox, Senior Pastor here at the Ministry Word of Truth. We say, go in the grace and the favor of God. We'll see you next time. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you. Until next time. Hallelujah.